How's it going you guys? I'm just here, just finished up my pork chops, drinking some delicious yerba mate. Man, this stuff is dark and strong, just the way I like it. So what I want to talk about in this video is what can you do? What's the most effective approach when you feel like you don't know what you want in life? When you feel like you're not really sure what path to take, what direction to take, um, you know, people tell you to write down goals, but you don't really have any goals to write down. Maybe you are going to college and you don't know what degree you should pursue. So... I've been there many times before, and uh, this problem hit me really hard in 2012 when I was forced to completely let go of my previous identity as an adolescent. Uh, I was 21 years old at the time, not really an adolescent, but in my mind I was still living the life of an adolescent, and essentially... I was in multiple bands, playing music, playing shows, stuff like that. And I realized, you know what? Uh, maintaining a band of like-minded people who are on the same path is extremely challenging. And every single time I was getting somewhere with my music, I, my, my band decided to have problems. Because I had to maintain other people's lives and rely on other people's success in order to enforce my own success, in order to live out my own. So it wasn't just my goal, it was the entire band's goal. And I got tired of the band breaking up over and over again and then having to reassemble it. Not to mention there's not a whole lot of money in music unless you do everything right. You have to really know what you're doing, you have to know the right people, and you have to be very persistent. And you're not going to be making money for years, you know, unless you get, unless you really are on the right path and whatnot, and run into the right opportunities. And so basically I had to realize, look man, you know, look Wolfgang, <laughs> you need to find a passion that can provide you with your own success where you're not relying on other people and it will provide you money and the resources that you need while still fulfilling that passion deep inside. So eventually I became a personal trainer. I eventually got into natural medicine, things of that nature, and just health science in general. And also started doing martial arts but it took me a very long time to really start to make make real progress and produce real results with that passion. And the reason why it took me so long to really create true success in those fields is because of an improper approach, an improper mindset, and improper goal setting. So here's the thing. So what you need to do is... And so you don't know specifically what you want to do, but you probably know the feelings you want to feel in your life. You probably know the, 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 the resources that you need, the things that you want in a specific goal or a specific field or passion or hobby or whatever it might be, or career. Career is what we're talking about here. You might know the characteristics that you want inside of a career, but you may not know what type of career you want. So, um, so for me, self-expression was a really huge thing. Obviously making money, making at least a little bit more money than I needed to survive. Um, being able to help other people with the knowledge that I had and being able to be physically active and create my own schedule. So those are some of the things that I wanted in a career. And, you know, first of all, you have to understand that most of the things you want in a career are possible. 
if you are coming from the approach that, oh, that's, there's no career that matches that, it's impossible to find a career like that, even if that career exists, I, I wouldn't be able to get it anyway, that's unrealistic. If you come from that approach, then you're not going to get anywhere. That's catastrophic thinking, and it's not realistic, and the only thing that it does is keep you stuck. So you have to believe that the career is actually out there. Because the thing is, there are there's an infinite amount of careers, and some of the ones that don't even exist yet, you could create yourself. But they exist. It's just that you're because you're you're you don't believe they exist, and because you're not you don't know where to look, and because you don't even know exactly what you want, you don't see them. You don't recognize the careers that match the things you want. But when you start to believe that they exist, or have faith that they exist, and you start to write down the characteristics that you want. Any kind of goal setting in general, no matter how specific it is, if you're consistent with it and you write down at least a couple goals every single day, what that does is it it keeps it keeps it in the back of your mind. It 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 basically trains your brain to focus on those things. And so you might be going throughout your day not paying attention and everything. But if an opportunity comes into your life that is in alignment with your goals, that matches up with the things you want in a career, even if you're not paying attention, you'll be more likely to recognize that opportunity when it comes up because you every single day you write down the characteristics of the career that you want or you write down whatever goals you have. And so your brain is every single day being reminded of the things that you're looking for, being reminded of the things that you want to create in your reality. This is not a magical thing, this is actually a fact of psychology, and there's many books written about it. It's actually um, used heavily in fields of psychology, like uh, be behave uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, and things of that nature. I didn't realize how prominent this is, but it's actually a very common uh, method that PhD psychologists are taught in school and they, they use on a regular basis to help their clients see happiness and success in their life and to change faulty, negative, limiting beliefs and things that don't get them fo moving forward. So writing down, you know, so for example, financial freedom, you know, but like, let's make it real basic. Like, I need enough money to pay for my bills, to pay for the things that I need in life, you know. Maybe $2,000 a month. Maybe $3,000 a month. I don't know about you guys, but $3,000 a month is more than enough that I need to pay for everything that matters to me. That's because I don't go and spend a shit ton of money I, on things I don't need. Anyway, so write down whatever specific number that is. $3,000 a month. And then, you know, um, I, I want to have peace of mind... You know, I want to be able to, I don't know, eat throughout my shift or I want to be able to move around a little bit so I'm not like stiff and have like a like pain in my back or pain in my neck or whatever. Um, like simple things like your the things that really matter to you that make your that make or break your work. You know, there's things that make people hate their job, like bad management, um, you know, ignorant co-workers, things like that. And so on your goal list, you know, I want friendly work environment. Um, I want, you know, reasonable management or something. Like these are the very basic general things that can be applied to any career. And so here's the thing is like, it's not about finding your like perfect career. The goal is to move in the direction of positivity. <laughs> and this is the thing is like people are all or nothing like, I need, like, to be the next, um, the next, like, Warren Buffett or something, or whatever. <laughs> that's too, like, that, no, like, that's too, no. Okay, so, the, when you start to move in a more positive direction, um, momentum starts to build. It's like the snowball effect, where when you start to you're in a career that, that is good for you, you're in a more positive, you're better off now than where you were, you start to move in that direction, momentum will carry you to those larger goals, okay? 
But you don't get to be Warren Buffett by just like snapping your fingers, writing down a goal, and then it's like perfect. You get there small steps, they build up to, they create big achievement over time. And so you start general. Um, I, you know, like write it, write some of the things that you enjoy doing, some of the things you're interested in, things like that. Um, but the things you want, you know, and, and this can be applied to all your life, you know, everything, you know, um, you may need some hobbies or something, some passions. And so in order to find those, you just write down the things that make you happy. Think back to your childhood. Think back to some of the happiest times in your life where you were feeling the feelings that you want in the career path that you want, that you're trying to find, or in the hobby that you're trying to find. You were feeling those, those feelings. For me, it was on stage. You know, I felt I was, like, uh, super pumped up and motivated and, and like, because I was performing in front of a crowd of people they could I, I loved expressing myself to so many people where they could see me perform and that gave me like a really great sense of fulfillment to give my energy to people to a large crowd and so when I started making YouTube videos at first it was just to try to do something with my time something productive and I had a lot of things I was working through that I want to share on camera over time I started to realize that talking to my YouTube audience is basically an alternative to performing music in front of a crowd. And so it was a way of me getting the same feeling, the same fulfillment that I was getting on stage. But now you know, this could turn into more money. Not that I, these days I'm not really as attached to that anymore, but I could help more people. There could be one person that watches my videos. And I'm performing in front of a crowd the same way I was when I was in a band. But now one person could see this and this could change their life forever. And they could be the next, you know, hero of the world, like the next savior. They could create an invention that saves the, the world's atmosphere or something. And it could have all been because of some kind of motivation they got from my video. Or maybe I helped them with one of their health problems. The point is, I could literally change one person's life. One person out of the 50 views I get on a video could be the next world's hero. And so you have to recognize small things create big things over time and start small, start general, and don't aim for the big picture first. You don't have to know exactly what you want. You don't have to get the perfect career right away. You don't have to have 10,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel to make an impact. You, all you really need is that one person that watches your video and you can make a huge impact on the world. And you know, the more that you focus on the more you approach things this way, the more progress you're going to make and the less discouraged you're going to be. The reason why a lot of people don't move forward is because they want perfection first. I have to know exactly what I want. I have to, you know, like, um, I have to get straight A's. And if I get a B, then like, oh no, I can't do that. Like, and that, you know, it's catastrophic thinking. Don't aim high. Like aim to aim to aim to win small wins. Aim to win. Okay? Just creating a YouTube video is a win. Just writing down your goals is a win, but you need to keep those small wins going. It's small, consistent goals over time. And being general, being general, that's a small step towards towards knowing specifically what you want. That's how you that's how you get unstuck. That's how you make progress. That's how you move towards a bigger goal.